a lot at stake. The, there's a manufacturer's challenge at stake between uh, Opel and Toyota, and also the Drivers' Championship is going to be decided after six hours today. Tony Viana, with the best chance at the moment, leading one of the legends in South African motorsport, and that is Serge Damsu. Tony, to win the South African Drivers' title, a lot rests on today. Oh yes, definitely, it's uh, all go for it. The, uh, the other teams are very near there. I've been very unlucky so far. Uh, I haven't finished over here. Uh, last year when we had an attempt, we were leading until uh, we had fail uh, brake failure and uh, Duxbury put it in the wall. So uh, this time, definitely, I'm going all out to win it. And Serge, of course, the big competition. Uh, yes, Serge in his uh, field there, uh, he's well off and it's his circuit, so he knows it very well. And the big thing is, is you must take running, that's it. You can't afford to have an uns unscheduled pit stop. Well, to win the championship today, I have to finish first in my class and Vianen has to be get beaten by another car. So it's really in the lap of the gods. Yeah, so, you know, it's a long race, a six hour, it all depends on the cars and things like that, so we'll see at the end. Uh, and you've got a good record in this race. Yes, I have a good record and I've got a good little car. Earlier today, we took a trip around Kalani to show you what it's like in the hands of our well-known TV presenter, Hendrik Favut, who is racing in this race. In fact, we're sitting alongside Hendrik in the car that holds the South African speed and endurance record for 1,300cc cars over 72 hours at an average of 165 k's an hour. Into holes, this is named after the designer of the Kalani racetrack, Edgar Hold. And you let it drift to the outside, haul it into the inside, hold on to third gear, pass the shark's teeth to keep you on the road, and you'll be going up to Castrol at about 145, 150 kilometers an hour. You're heavy onto the anchors, the circuit very hard on brakes, and very hard on tyres. There's eight corners on the circuit. They are tight ones. This one seems to go on forever as you go round and round Castro and start heading away. The left hand and next is on the way down to Duckham's. And of course, always looking for the traffic coming past you. There's the Tony Pond, Barry Williams car. They are the international stars who've come over for this race for Toyota. Into Duckham's dip, you let the car drift to the outside. You can see all the tire marks on the road where people have made mistakes. And here's the interesting one. Up the Malmesbury straight into Sabat Sweep. It's a double right-hander. Here's the first one. You take it as one corner. You let it go to the outside. Then pull it in. Normally go up on this curb. Let it just, there it goes. Hendricks on the curb. And the slower cars will move over to the right-hand side. He'll go down here at about 100. 75 kilometers an hour in the race he's going to do about 207 laps the faster cars on the way down this long straight down a bp will be doing between 210 and 215 kilometers an hour they've got 221 laps of this ahead of them heavy onto the brakes there's brake markers on the left hand side you go into the brakes wide into bp corner you start pulling it in tightly there to bank this corner and let the car move to the outside as you go away and uh, head up for your next lap. You can always keep a check on the cars coming the other way as you go up towards the pit. There's the entrance to the pit. There's a lot of drums there to slow you down on the way in and try and pick out your lap signals at this speed as you make your way past the pits. And in this huge field, there's Opals and Toyotas, BMs, Volkswagens, Mazdas and Fords, all the giants of the South African motor industry. The favorite, Tony Viana, very confident in pole position. And Sol van Ameva also in with a chance, shaking hands there with Terry Moss. Let's hear from Sol. I think there's probably about a good 10 or 12 cars that could win. So it's, uh, it's normally a race of attrition. So I think if you just keep everything going and keep the car in one piece, we should be there at the end, or yeah. pretty close. Now you on record are saying Terry Moss, one of the uh, young up-and-coming stars of South Africa Bona Racing, you still hold that view? Certainly yes, I think he's a super driver. Toyota very intent on winning the Manufacturers Challenge that brought out two international stars, Tony Pond and Barry Williams. Tony, nice to have you back. How are you going to play this? Well, we're going to play this like international stars. We'll follow all the others around and come last, I expect. But no, no, we, we, we intend to just try and drive a nice, clean, tidy race, stay away from the kerbs, stay out of trouble. And I think that's the formula, you know, don't go too quickly. And six we hours. We try and keep the car like that, don't we? You know, yeah. hang on. That's it. We've got to keep the car looking like that as well if we can. And what about the amount of traffic on the road? There's a lot of motor cars on the road. As long as they all go the same way as that, it doesn't matter. You don't think it's too crowded, 45 cars at once? <laughs> it's a bit like a London traffic jam, really, isn't it? No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Here is that London traffic jam. Viano and Goddard on the right-hand side in the BM, Lance and O'Sullivan on the left-hand side. They come down towards us. There's uh, Saul van Ameva on the third row peeping out, and the Castrol 6 are underway. Notice not the bumping and barging you normally, normally see in the 10-lap sprints, 
as these 46 cars all queue up to go through the first corner, and that's Hulshook. They're getting themselves settled into this race as the way they're going. They, these are standard cars as you can buy off the showroom floor. They just disconnect the rev limiter. They take the air conditioning out if they've got them fitted. They can change the cast and camber on these cars. They can fit other shocks, open exhausts, and also fit a roll cage just to protect the driver. But already the pattern's starting to be set there. Viana is coming out of Castle down into Duckham's, and he's in the lead. A nice sizable lead on the first lap there, ahead of John Gipp and Gordon Hatch, the extra -desions. Very close. Already they're starting to get into their groups of cars and look at them streaming through Duckham's. Not quite the dump, bumping and bulging, but this is running at sprint paces as they come out of Duckham's and start settling down for the six hours that lie ahead. And here they're coming at full speed, over 200 k's an hour as they come down into BP. There's Viana, there's Gibbon Hatch, there's uh, Sorrel van der Meer already in third position, ahead of Graham Duxbury and uh, Innes Hienes in the BMW, they're lying in fourth position. Then it's Aberdeen, it's Briggs, it's Martin, as they stream through there. Peter Lance missing from that leading pack, he went off in one of the early corners, and he's got to fight his way up through this field. And the pressure certainly on Viana in there with Gibb problems from Saul van Ameva. The inside back wheel high off the ground as he is right on the limit. This has been run at sprint paces as they stream through holes. And here's the battle a little further down the field. The 1600s and 1300cc cars engage in a battle royal. And well may the marshals give the blue passing flags. Look at this traffic jam going into BP. Sorrell has got into second position. Gibb is next, pushing his way in there is, uh, is Graham Duxbury in the Innes Hienes BMW as they come out of B as, uh, BP. It's Sorrell van Ameva checking his mirrors. Try getting your pit signals as you come past the pits at 180 kilometers like this. It's trying to get into the slow traffic now. Viana, here's Garth LaRue sharing the car with Farney Els as the others come streaming in. Duxbury in there as well. There's Chris Aberdeen making his way up through the field, getting onto the tail of uh, Sorrel van der Merwe. And the other, there's the Opel team coming, led by Michael Briggs. And look at the aerials. They look like model car racers as they come in here. This is new electronics introduced into South African motor racing. Streaming through there. Van der Merwe's got the heat on him. Oh, and Duxbury loses it. And he nearly caught it there, but he's lost it right across. And look at that one car locking its wheel there as he corrects and spins it up very cleverly off the road as they stream through. That's some quick thinking by the other motor cars and also by Graham Duxbury, losing a lot of places as he gets back into this field. Well, that's bad luck for him. It's hot work there. Try standing in these fireproof overalls for six hours throughout this Castrol race. Still the battles rage down the field. Here's the one between Wenzel and Hasty between uh, Stevens and Van Jarsveld, and between Basil Mann and Wayne Bezadenote. And here the, they have to keep watching the mirrors all the time as Viana arrives. More problems, the wave, blue flags to say that somebody coming up to pass you are out all the time. Clive Rice sharing the car with Brian Cook this time. That's the brother of Jimmy Cook, and a very fine job they're making of staying in this race. Fourth, fourth in their class at the moment as they go out of Castrol and head down towards Duckham's. This is close racing, it's been going on now for over an hour, and this is how close it is. Just motor cars, wherever you look around the circuit, there's Aberdeen and Nine, as they stream into Castle Corner. And here's the terrible twins, that's the Sabat team, it's the Sabat Ford, and uh, there's Clive Rice just following him into Castle Corner there. And, oh, Cecil Stockwell and uh, Barry Capellas into trouble there, holes of catching out a lot of drivers, always does, and be sure to have more action in this race a little later on. Heart in the mouth as he goes through, but it's coming up for pit time. This is where the, the pit stops start to count. Dams, in fact, as he makes his way towards his pit, starts to run out of fuel. He's kept it very, very late. He stayed. A lot of worry there from the Toyota pits. And there's Chris White waiting for his uh, the leader in the C-class there, his brother Mike White. And in we come. And this is Johan Kutsi bringing the car in for Jan Hetterman to take over. That's a seasoned campaigner. No panic as he gets in there. New rubber goes on. A quick service. Hetterman sitting, waiting to go. One screen, one screen, one screen. Anxious moments in the BMW pit. There's Goddard waiting, looking at his watch. What's happening down the pit road? 
There's problems down there starting to call for aid. And there's Duxbury out of fuel. He's left it a bit late. The 75 litres of petrol are out. Graham Duxbury is pushing the motor car. And here they come. And here comes the Brian Gilmore, Graham Cooper car trying to squeeze past. A little bit of impatient hooter there as he tries it. just makes it as he comes out of the pits. And he's on his way. And Michael Briggs keeping the Opal flag flying is in for a quick change. Michael, two hours into the uh, Castle 6 South. Everything going to, uh, to plan. I see those Volkswagens, are three ahead of you. Yeah, um, the pace is very hot out there. I try to hang in with them for a while, but the pace is really hectic out there. So I just sat in close, w close enough to be able to watch them. I think that uh, we will win, win this race right here in the pits. That's, that's where it'll all happen for us. And the car going well? The car's going very smoothly. I had a little moment, uh, one of the BMWs spun in the straight and I had to climb on the brakes so I flat spotted a tyre. But other than that, the car's very good for this, this stage of the race. I just hope it all hangs together now. And Sorrel van der after his stint of driving, strapping in Terry Moss, who's going out for two hours. The Volkswagen put under the able control of Jeff Mortimer. And the talk is that Sorrel and Moss are going to try and go through with just tyres and fuel. They're not going to stop for any disc pads, which is one of the essential things. And there's the order after two and a half hours. In Class C, we've got the White Brothers still leading Damzu. Hepburn and Wolford in the Sabat Mazda lead Class D. And Class E, uh, Chad Wenzel and Colin Hastie in the Opal Cup are leading the fourth wagon. A very late stop there for Tony Vianney. He's into the pits. Jeff Goddard, the BMW test driver, is going to take over. There's no panic. They're used to pit stops all over the country. They've been in record breaking as well, a well-trained team as they get out. 75 litres going in. New Conti is going on, fresh rubber onto the back. And uh, there's no panic in this BMW team. They've got a nice lead at this stage, but they've got to watch. It's all going to be won or lost in these pits. Fiona anxious to get that car back. There's Ben Morgan Root pits there with Paddy driver. You can just see them coming to the pits ahead of them. And off they go. Whoopsie, and Alan Jones has rolled the golf there. Not a good sign there. And approaching Castle Corner, uh, Toby Fenter from Western Area sharing the two litre boss there with Roddy Turner. In there for Opal to get the manufacturer's points if possible. And everywhere you look around the circuit, there are just motor cars racing out. 43 cars of the 46 still hard at work. And Willie Learmonth, here he approaches Castrol as well, trying very hard. He's sharing the car with the rallyist, Nick Duval, and look at him getting that wheel in the air. It stops actually in the air as he goes through there. But back of the pits, there's a lot of hard work going on. The backroom boys, the timekeepers, have a major job keeping check of all the motor cars in this race. Very difficult job indeed with the manual record being kept in case there's any power failure at all. And while the timekeepers are hard at work, the motor cars certainly are giving it their all as they go round and round the 3,2 kilometer circuit. And whoopsie, there's a BMW wheel without a motor car. Who does that belong to? Just shows how hard these cars have been pushed on this very demanding track. It's on the Sabat sweep, a fast one, a dangerous place to go off. And it's the left back wheel of the Hannes Furstays and Nico Bianca car. That's Bianca on the right hand side. And they really are dug in there. That's Nico, not too worried. He's starting to make his way back to the pits. You've really got to get the wheel changed in this motor car. It's in a dangerous spot with the tools that are in the motor car. And oh, Alan Estazen in the Martinez Briers, Volkswagen Golf, that's an all Pretoria team, that's giving that, those mechanics anxious moments, it's a very bad place as they jack up the motor cars. There's the terrible twins, the two Sabat cars, the Ford and the uh, Mazda, with Jaber and Dunkley leading their class, leading on index, ahead of Willie Hepburn and Larry Wolford. A great performance, they were like that the whole time. And the wheel laboriously being put into action, they've gone to call Nico Bianca in the meantime, they want him to finish his stint. He's been pushed out of that hole now, and he's going to get back into the race. A long, hard, hot afternoon ahead of him as he pulls away from the sweep and gets back into the race. A little bit of confidence gone there. You don't want to lose wheels on fast corners like that Sabat sweep. And more drama. That's the Sorrel van der Terry Moss car out with mechanical problems. So from being well-placed, that car is out of the race, and that's bad news for the Volkswagen team. 
Here's more problems. The engine mounting is gone on the Wyndham Marie car. They've been going so well in that car on a normal garage jack as they come in. Here's more problems. Toby Fenter brings in a little bit unscheduled there. The wheel changes. This is Jurotech training as they get out there. They were doing pit stops in 35 seconds to change rubber and put in petrol. And here's terminal problems. Looks like he's been into the felt. Roddy Turner's changed with him, sitting confidently, unaware of all the problem that's going on underneath the motor car. And I don't think Prattley's is going to do this. This is going to be terminal. You can't get big holes in the sump like this and expect to go on with all this hot oil. And in fact, that's the case. Peter Duvall, the team manager, says, Finito, wheel it away to the dead car park, and that race is run. And here's Goddard in on schedule with the leading BMW, Tony Viana, checking the back disc pads. Are they going to change them? This is certainly not scheduled. Changing front pads is certainly on. Back pads are going to take an awful long time. And the marketing director of Volkswagen, that's Clive Worrello on the left-hand side, he's got his clock running. He knows this is hope for the Volkswagen team. They know to change front pads. Normally takes about two and a half minutes. But to change the back pads, that's another story. And Viana sits anxiously there as Aberdeen goes into the lead. There's that white hot pad, or not pad, shoe. It's metal to metal on the back pads. As new rubber goes on, they're working with white hot discs there. It's very difficult working on those motor cars. As Briggs goes into second position and Tony Viana is now back in third position with an hour and a half to go, he's certainly got a major job ahead of him. It's back into action, but it's been four and a half minutes. So with an hour and a half to go in this Castrol 6 hour, this is where the real race begins. Aberdeen leads Briggs by 46 seconds and he leads Vion in third spot by a minute and 32 seconds. Damzu and Saunders are leading Class C, Jabeir and Dunkley in Class D and Mann and Bezaidenot are leading the two Opals at the moment. As night descends, the cars have been hard at it all afternoon. The drivers are tired, the mechanics are tired, and this is when the mistakes start to happen. As we say, the real race begins in these final uh, 90 minutes. And here in the gloom of Kalani, another man is off. It's the Grand von Skolkweg Arthur Boyle car, the all Port Elizabeth team. They've lost, lost a left front wheel. Lucky they didn't hit that retaining wall there, but they certainly are out of this race as these very efficient marshals from Kalani go into action. And there's the Class B battle for the 1600cc cars. The terrible twins, Jaber and Dunkley, Hepburn and Wilford, well on their way to the team prize. With an hour to go, they've been like this the whole afternoon, and they're still hard at it. They're going to win the index, and they're going to win the team prize as well. It's cars wherever you look. The activity in the pits is furious, and so it is on the track. Look at all the Toyotas still in it. They're going for the manufacturer's prize. In fact, the one they win it by just six points, Ahead of Opal, Clive Rice sharing with Brian Cook, now lying third in his class and doing very well. And as the lights of Cape Town come on, we're into the dying moments of this race. And for some reason, either Aberdeen is slowing his motor car or Viana is gaining at a great rate or not. As Brian Hoskins, the clerk of the course, gives the flag to signal the end of the Castrol 6 hour, we're waiting for Aberdeen to come up the road. John Round and Aberdeen winning the Castrol 6 hour. There he is in the 16 valve Volkswagen Golf. And the wait now is for Tony Viana. Has he made it? Well, he hasn't, of course. He's coming through in second position as he comes out of this pack and across the line to come home in second position with the light winking. There's going to be celebrations in the Volkswagen pit, that's for sure, as we talk to the winners after this race. You're sweating a bit near the end there, Chris. Yeah, a little bit. I clipped a curb about five laps from the end, and I thought there was a, I had a puncture, so there was a vibration. So it was, I was really sweating about the last five laps. Yeah, and Tony Viana closing on you? Yeah, we we started with quite a few seconds in hand, and he slowly whittled it away, and luckily we ended up with 20 seconds in hand, so it went very well. Now, John, the motor car itself went well. Fantastic. We actually decided from the word go, we'd push it, and set the pace, and it lasted fantastically. There was no problems at all with it. South African saloon car champion in 1988. Tony, you really had to work for this one. Yes, definitely. It was a very hot race, and uh, I knew we would have to go out. Uh, you know, this was, it's not a six hour, it's a sprint race. It's really, we had to go out flat out. The uh, Volkswagen, they did a lot of work, and uh, I must take my hat off with them. They came out with a bag of tricks this time. They didn't have to change the rear pads, and we had to do a full pit stop with changing rear pads, and it takes a very long time. So the changing of the rear pads wasn't planned, actually? Uh, definitely not, but because of the pace was high and it uh, was very hot, uh, the wear on the rears were much higher than what we expected to be. 
and uh, so we didn't want to take a chance, we changed them. Now in the last hour and a half it seems to be when this race really gets underway. Then you started to put the pressure on, it wasn't too far, you weren't too far behind Aberdeen at the end. No, I tried it utmost, I was, you know, the, my pits were telling me I sort of, uh, we needed 42 seconds in, and I had to try and do it in 20 laps and it, it was a bit difficult, I tried and I got very near to his bumper but not good enough. So it's really one who lost in the pits? Yes, definitely. Uh, you can go out there and you can fight whatever you like. But, uh, you know, if you take a, a second of a guy, it takes you an hour to make up a minute. And uh, in a pits, a minute is nothing. So there's the first 10 home. The index of performance went to Dion Joubert and Gary Dunkley from the Sabat team. The manufacturer's prize to Toyota and a hard luck prize to Terry Moss. And the last words from our cricketing spring box. Well, I think it's a great experience. We had a lot of fun. It was pretty nerve-wracking stuff, but we got into it and really, really enjoyed it. Cars went well. It was great fun. But you certainly improved over the last six months you've been in it. Well, if we haven't improved at all, they'll have to kick us out of here because we've tried really hard and given it our best shot. I think we have done really nicely. You've done fantastic. You're both very, very competitive. Clive, the weekend didn't start too well, but certainly improved. Well, I don't quite know our position in, in the race, but it's got to be better than what happened last night. <laughs> And you've enjoyed your motor racing too. Best thing I've ever done. Any? Uh, he doesn't know how to run a garage. I mean, how can he run out? I'm asking you. No more can of the best. Shit. His customers are just going to go down the road. I'm telling you. It's only 300 k's to hot as hell. Well, there we are. Welcome back indeed. Some exciting racing there from Killarney and uh, certainly get you up to date with uh, some cricket. I've got a very smiling Henrik uh, right next door to me.